and less engines are pretty awesome. And there's a ton of options when it comes to building your own. But that can also make it pretty confusing. So today we're testing intake manifolds to see which one you want. These are all front breather manifolds, but we've got four on the dyno for you. We've got a stock intake manifold, a fast LSXR manifold, a fast LSXHR manifold, and finally we're going to be running a poly high ramp. That's it right there. Hang on, we're going to have some fun. But before we get too heavy into testing, let's take a moment to go over the engine Prestige Motorsports is using for a test mule. We need to move enough air to be able to stress the different intakes we'll be testing, so we'll be using a 441 cubic inch LS based engine. Prestige is using their own aluminum LS3 cylinder heads up top, and the engine is square. Both the bore and the stroke are 4 inches 125 thousandths. Combined with a 66cc chamber volume on the cylinder heads, that comes out to a compression ratio of 10.7 to 1. To help move plenty of air, the heads are outfitted with a set of stainless steel valves that are sized at 2 inches 20 thousandths for the intakes and an inch 600 for the exhausts. The intake ports, by the way, are sized at 255 cc's. The valves are operated by a hydraulic roller cam from Comp Cams. It's ground with 253 and 261 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths tap at lift. There are 110 degrees of lobe separation and the lobe lift is 399 thousandths for the intakes and 389 thousandths for the exhaust. With the 1.7 to 1 ratio rocker arms, that creates gross valve lift of 678 thousandths of an inch for the intakes and 661 thousandths for the exhaust. Oh, and it's on a 104 degree intake center line. So that's basically it. A pretty stout LS3, but nothing too fancy or out of the ordinary, which is exactly what a lot of guys are running both on the street and at the track. First up will be a baseline of sorts. This is a stock GM LS3 intake manifold. There are a million of them out there. You can get them used on the cheap, or OEM replacements from your local parts store run about 300 bucks all day long. But don't let the low cost and relatively pedestrian looks fool you. GM's engineers did a fantastic job when they designed this baby. The LS3 rectangular intake port is already a big improvement over the older cathedral ports, and this intake does a great job of taking advantage of them. From previous experience testing this intake, we already know that it does a really good job of making great power off idle all the way through about 5,000 RPM or so. But it also, out of necessity, has to be quite short in order to fit under the hood of a Corvette. So that has to come with some compromises. So we'll start with the stock intake and throttle body and then see how they stack up against what the aftermarket has to offer. Anyhow, let's let her rip. Results aren't bad at all. Peak torque was 577.3 foot pounds at 5100 RPM, and we hit maximum horsepower at 6000 RPM with 599.7 horses. Of course, just looking at the peak numbers can be deceiving, so we'll also be checking the averages for each pull. For this pull from 3500 to 6400 RPM, the stock intake averages 541.8 foot pounds of torque and 511 horsepower. And that's that. Next up will be the fast LSXR intake manifold. This is quite similar in design with the stock intake, but more oriented for performance. Both intakes maximize the intake runner length by wrapping the runners across the roof of the plenum. So that means the opening for the runner leading to the left side of the engine is on the right side of the intake. For example, here's the interior of the stock intake. Now, take a look at the plenum of the fast LSXR. Notice how it's more open and overall just cleaner. 
The runners are also longer than stock, which makes the plenum slightly taller, as you can see here. Although we didn't do it for this test, the LSXR also disassembles into three main components for easy porting. So, Senior, Prestige's lead engine builder, knocked out the swap before the engine had even gotten cool. During the previous dyno pulls, Senior noticed that the stock 42 pounds per hour injectors were all the way up at 91% duty cycle by the top of the pull. So, to keep the new aftermarket intakes from maxing out the injectors, he switched to a set with higher capacity. Also, we wanted to keep this comparison legit, so he kept the stock 90mm drive-by-wire throttle body, at least for now. Otherwise, we kept the same inch and three quarter to inch and seven eighths step dyno headers and the same 93 octane pump gas throughout the rest of the test. So here we go. As you can see, the fast LSXR outperformed the stock intake all through the pull, but mainly from 3,900 to 5,400 RPM. It had peaks of 588.8 foot-pounds of torque at 4,900 RPM and 604.1 horsepower at 6,000. Plus, the averages throughout the pull were approximately 5.5 better on torque and 11 horsepower, so that's pretty significant. But, by the end of the pull, both intakes were back to being pretty even. We figured this was a stock throttle body that was a choke point, so Senior swapped out the 90mm unit for a 102mm sniper throttle body from Holly. Adding the sniper throttle body really woke things up. Peak torque jumped up an additional 11.6 foot-pounds to 600.4, which, spoiler alert here, is the highest torque figure we saw among all the intakes. Horsepower, meanwhile, also improved by 15.5 to 619.6. Just by changing out the throttle body, the averages went from 547.5 to 558.6 foot-pounds of torque and 516 horsepower to 526.8. Now we turn our attention to the big boys. This is fast LSX HR 103mm LS3 intake manifold. It's pretty unique because it is one of the only lightweight polymer tunnel ram intake manifolds for the LS3 that's on the market. And as you can see, it's modular. This is the long runner set fast includes with the LSX HR, but you can also order medium or short runner lengths depending on how you want to tune your engine. Interestingly, the air stacks get progressively shorter from front to back to match the sloping roof of the plenum. With the fast tunnel ram on the engine, you can see that it is obviously much taller than either the stock or the fast LSXR intakes. If you want to run this or the Holly intake that we'll be testing next, you'll probably want to give up any plans of running a stock hood. Given the shorter runner length of the LSX HR, because it's designed to work better in the higher RPM range, we didn't even bother with the stock throttle body and went straight for the 102mm sniper unit. In some ways, this is a bit of an unfair comparison because both the fast LSX HR and the Holly High Ram coming up next are optimized for boosted applications. 
In fact, even though it's constructed from polymer, Fast says that the LSX HR can handle up to 45 pounds of boost continuously. As you might expect, we found that the LSX HR lagged in power production in the lower RPM levels, but it really took off after 5800 RPM. But hey, this is a race intake after all. The peaks were 582.4 foot-pounds of torque, which is 18 lower than the previous fast intake, but horsepower did jump up 26 to 625 and a half. The improved flow of the intake Help the engine keep pulling past our previous 6400 RPM red line all the way up to 6600 this time. And now on to the Holly High Ram. Like the LSX HR, this is a tunnel ram intake. It is significantly taller than the stock style intake, but these two are basically about the same height. Holly says their high ram cast aluminum intakes are designed to be a more affordable option for max effort LS engines than fabricated intakes. We're using the forward snout design, but Holly has multiple plenum top options available. So even if you want to change it up after you've purchased one, you just unbolt the plenum top and bolt up a new one. The runners on the high ram don't extend into the plenum. So at six and a half inches, they are shorter than those on the LSX HR. That should push the peak power higher into the RPM range, but just how much is the real question. There's only one way to find the answer, and that is to burn some gas. This time around, we hit our highest peak power yet, 637.4 horsepower at 6400 RPM. The torque the high end produced was the lowest of our five tests, but it was still pretty strong at 571.2 foot-pounds. It's obvious that the high ram isn't the best option for a stock-style engine that's naturally aspirated and spends most of its time below 5000 RPM or so, but that's not really what it's for anyway. Both the LSX HR and the high ram are designed for max effort, high RPM applications where they do significantly better than the other options from 6 to 8,000. Plus, from previous engine builds, we know that this design really shines with boost, either turbos or a supercharger. We're only testing in naturally aspirated conditions this time around, but the moral of the story is there really is no loser here except for maybe the stock intake manifold, which was beaten by the fast LSXR in every phase of the game. For a stock or a moderately modified LS, the fast LSXR will produce great results. And when you scrape up some money, a bigger throttle body is an easy upgrade that'll unlock even more power. And while a stock style intake will work well with boost, the tunnel ram style intakes absolutely love the stuff. But even in naturally aspirated engines, intakes like the fast LSX HR and Holly's High Ram can knock your socks off if you give them lots of cubic inches and plenty of RPMs. So, find what works best for you and let her rip. Hey, thanks for watching.